Welcome to the Six Pattern video series. Uh, I'm Kevin. I'm Max. And we're here to talk about patterns of pulmonary fibrosis today. That's right. Patterns of pulmonary fibrosis that are not the usual type. Correct. This is a real common problem in the consult practice. As we've said before, these are the biopsies that seem to trouble everyone. You've got a serious disease with scarring. Uh, you've looked at the biopsy. It's patchy fibrosis. You call it UIP. The clinician says, hey, send that case out to Max Smith. And you, uh, you say, why? And he says, because in this case, the patient does not have the features clinically and radiologically of UIP. Now, why would that be so consistently the case? Well, that's because in today's world, with the most recent ATS ERS classification guidelines for usual interstitial pneumonia, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, if the patient presents and has typical clinical and radiographic features, they will not undergo biopsy. That's a big deal. That's fact, a, it's an expensive and dangerous procedure for patients. And, and so that fact is actually extremely important to remember if you're interpreting lung biopsies with fibrosis. So your pretest probability for a classic UIP of IPF in today's world, compared to 10 years ago, is exceedingly lower right. than it used to be. Right. So, in fact, it, you should assume that most biopsies are due to a disease other than idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And it's your job as a pathologist to look around and see what histologic clues are there to help you direct the clinician as to what the etiology of this fibrosis right. might be. The key there is clues. So we're going to help you today in identifying some clues. That's right. So this biopsy is from a 55-year-old female patient who presents with shortness of breath and cough. And she's got imaging studies that show some fibrosis, but also some ground glass opacities. Right. So in that question stem, what things make you say, well, this probably isn't UIP of IPF? Woman. Age. Age. So a younger woman. So we're not looking at a 65, 70-year-old man, which is the most classical, if you will, uh, clinical presentation for UIP of IPF. Right. And... The ground glass piece is troubling. Exactly. The clinician looks at a CT scan that has scarring with distortion of the architecture on imaging and ground glass opacities away from fibrosis and they think the patient either has two diseases, i.e. something causing ground glass and something causing fibrosis, or a disease that does both, inflammation and scarring. So a classic here would be the, the big mimicker of UIP, which is rheumatologic disease right. producing fibrosis. Any sort of connective tissue disease that can result in advanced pulmonary fibrosis. So what would you look for in this case? So in a patient less than 60, female, I would be looking for all the features of connective tissue disease uh, associated interstitial lung disease. So lymphoid hyperplasia, lymphoid follicles. So wait, you're saying there are morphologic features that whisper in your ear that this patient might have rheumatoid arthritis? That's right. That seems crazy. Or, or any other connective tissue disease. Although rheumatoid arthritis is most common. And it's a big player worldwide. So lymphoid hyperplasia, lymphoid follicles, secondary follicles, i.e. germinal centers, pleuritis, chronic pleural fibrosis. So in this case, as we get up to, to a little bit higher power, we've already established we have architectural distortion and fibrosis. But this case does have some heterogeneity to it. There's areas that look like this that sort of have intact alveolar architecture and areas that look like this that are hosed, hosed, in stage long. So many people look at this and say, oh, well, there's, there's geographic heterogeneity here. But are these areas really normal? I don't think so. Those don't look like normal alveoli. I think I can find one. They look a little bit generous, right? And the type 2 cells look prominent, like little tiny tombstones. So we have a little bit of lymphoplasmocytic infiltrate within the interstitium, yes. a little bit of swelling with the type 2 pneumocytes. Both of these things, if we were just to look at this picture, we were to classify with just this one image alone. More like NSIP. More like NSIP. So I like to say, anytime you start seeing areas that look like NSIP in a biopsy, Put the brakes on. Put the brakes on UIP for anything IPF. associated with UIP of IPF, exactly. So we've got areas that look like a little bit of a cellular interstitial infiltrate. Before I go on, I just want to point this out. 
Fibroblast focus. The fibroblast focus, right? We have a little proliferation of immature fibroblastic tissue, fibroblast, myofibroblast. Stuck right to the edge of damaged, scarred lung. So yeah. that's that's good for... That's a perfect yeah. fibroblast focus. Yeah. But this is not IPF. No. So fibroblast focus does not equal IPF, despite what you might read in some textbooks. Or, <laughs> or have heard. Okay, so, and here's the other feature that we see in this case that can help us point to an etiology, right? Yeah, germal center. Germal center, lymphoid hyperplasia. And in fact, when you look at low power, this biopsy has a blue appearance to it. Yeah, certainly areas look like little tiny nodules of blue. So that's a secret clue. Let's, let's look at the pleura for a second, too. It, so this pleura looks abnormal to me. You know, we look at lung cancer and pleura uh, when cancers occur under the pleura, and we try to distinguish layers of the pleura, whether the tumor is involving it. So we need to look at the pleura in cases of inflammatory disease, because the pleura is a separate organ. It's not really lung, it's pleura. It has its own embryologic derivation. And if so, the lung is involved, and the pleura is involved, all of a sudden you have a multi-system <laughs> disease. <laughs> And if the lung is involved and the pleura is not, meaning it's delicate and preserved, it suggests that the process is intrinsic to lung. Exactly. So what would you say about this pleura? This pleura is, has reduplicated collagen. It's thick. Now, if we did elastic tissue stains, we'd see a mess of elastic tissue here, and we wouldn't see that nice linear elastic lamina, sometimes double lamina, right underneath the, the pleural uh, epithelium. Here, we've got this this wiry collagen all sort of blending in with the surface of the pleura. So definitely pleural involvement. So we've yeah. got multi-system disease. So if we take a step back here and we look at this case overall, despite the fact that from low power, your immediate impression might be that this is a heterogeneous UIP pattern fibrosis. We've got a female. We've got a patient less than 60. We've got fibrosis with lymphoid hyperplasia. We've got nodular aggregates of inflammatory cells. We've got pleural thickening. Right. We've got areas that look like NSIP. Right. All of these features are pointing away from the classic syndrome UIP of IPF and are pointing towards a connective tissue disease associated interstitial lung disease. So what should the pathologist suggest in their report that if they think it's a connective tissue disease, are there any features here that would suggest one over the other of the big five? Sjogren's scleroderma, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus. Well, the lymphoid hyperplasia, the marked lymphoid hyperplasia would, would go along with rheumatoid arthritis. Right. And there are overlap syndromes with rheumatoid arthritis. So the I think we, we, don't, we don't want to get into telling them which one it is. We just say, hey, there are features here under the microscope that raise this possibility. So we think every investigation that can be done serologically would be important at this Absolutely. juncture. Not just an ANA screen, right? Right. We want to do. We want to suggest a robust serologic workup uh, to include the antisynthetase, antibodies, even the the rare uh, manifestations. And remember that up to twenty percent of patients who initially who, who develop pulmonary manifestations of connective tissue disease may present initially with pulmonary symptoms, even before serologic studies are positive. Right. So one in five can have a biopsy like this with negative autoimmune serology. And maybe no arthritis at that point. Exactly. Well, great. All right, so that sums up another one of the main mimics of UIP of IPF, the CTD-associated fibrotic lung biopsy. And if you enjoyed this video, what, what should our friends out there do? Don't forget to comment and like and subscribe.